yes, love, stream, love, OBS. I think it's open broadcasting software. How will that be different from Twitch? Twitch is where is the platform that gets your signal. Hi, by the way, everyone. Twitch is the platform that is broadcasting to everyone else. Streamlabs OBS is the software by which what we're doing goes up to Twitch. Okay. So that's kind of like if a TV studio is sending out to the world, we're the little reporter with our camera sending our signal to the news studio. Got it. Yes, hi everybody. Here we are. Uh, okay, so I've got a kind of a backlog of things that I need to uh, wrap up for this trilogy. I've got most of the illustrations done for the first book. Um, I don't quite have the whole map thing figured out. We've done many streams on me trying to figure out the map thing. I'm still still researching that. But in the meantime, there are a few um, odds and ends that I was hoping to do. Here's my, oh man, I need to update this. How many weeks until NorwestCon now? We've got, uh, till the end of April, how many weeks are there? That's, uh, that's four, Dad, your calculator. We, how many? Yeah, we, we need a, we need a calendar. <laughs> April 1st is when the book comes out. NorwestCon is when we're going to actually be trying to sell it to people's actual hands and faces okay. and bodies and, and physical space. Yeah, it's, it's 17 weeks. 17 weeks? Oh, okay. <clears throat> and we're not off base with my 16 weeks here. Um, yeah, so here's, I've got these illustrations that I hope to get through. So, um, when it, they look so neat. I just love seeing them in the book. Yeah, they do. Let's let's look at uh, how they look real quick, actually, while we're talking about it. Word. Um. Yeah. So now we've got. Well, this is a placeholder. There's not going to be a a picture of the book with the book <laughs> cover in the book. That'd be pretty meta. But. Uh, yeah, this is just for uh, beta readers who want to, you know, this, I'm saying, imagine you're looking at this book. Okay, so I've got a little frame that does some world building. I've got a little picture of, a, of some artifact or item that, that is in the story. And then just wherever there's particularly um, poignant things, you know, this, this spilled... Um, what are those things called? Brazier. Brazier uh, with burning oil plays a... Crucial. Crucial is a good word. Uh, uh, what, I'm point, thinking of the word for like uh, turning points in people's lives. There's a word for that. Um, yeah, and maps. and uh, So maps of, of the world, the land, that's super easy and fast to make. Uh, what's bogging me down right now is cities. We run through uh, several cities in the story, and hand drawing city maps takes forever. And there's going to be a lot of them throughout the book, so I'm looking into a way to c be computer assisted with that. Well, we could always just not show the city, we could just show a building or a thing in the city. Uh, yeah, all of those things are still hard. Um, Anyway, yeah, so here's, you know, the characters that you run into and, and uh, events that take place. Um, yeah, so I hand did most of these, but, and, and it shows there's a lot of them where the uh, perspective and or proportions are just terrible. Um, and you, but you get that kind of stuff for free well, when you do CG models. just say that's your models. style. Sure, it's my my style is to be bad. It's, it's like like I'm an anime artist. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, these are the kind of things that I'm working on. Um, actually, let me. So this is way down here. We've got wanted to show Scola because I just rendered this guy out last night. Yeah, I want to see what he looks like now. Am I gonna be shocked? 
shocked and dismayed, probably. Oh, okay. Now he looks like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? Come on, Scola is... Oh, there he is. Wait. There he is. Okay. Ta-da! Yeah. So this was just taking the 3D model that I've been working on forever and running it through a tune filter and then mixing it with the actual shaded render and it, it's all right. It's fine for now. I need to see if there's a better way to get a something that looks closer to a pencil drawing like this. Right. Would be ideal. Um, oh, hold on. Running into this problem again where I cannot see the comments on this. Unless I stretch it way out. Hey Kenzo! Good evening. Glad to be able to see people's comments now. Oop, boy, this is obnoxious. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Kenzo. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this over here and uh, anyway, yeah. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully I could make I can make this kind of thing look closer to my pencil line drawings, or eventually all my pencil line drawings will be replaced with more accurate CG models. But you know, doing every character and object uh, by myself that's that's going to be a long process. Eventually, this gets this whole world gets turned into a, a whole production, and you'll have I'll have production designers like they have on Game of Thrones, and every little detail can be worked out, and it'll be amazing. Uh, well, I I'm looking forward to fan uh, art, and fan yeah. fiction. Fan art would be nice. We 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 do have one piece of fan art. Yeah, we do. Which is we've got a little skull. Well, let's see. Um, He's a. He's there we go. That's it, yeah. So that's that's our first thing. That <laughs> <laughs> Skola giving a little peace sign and he's got a crown because they, they think they're the king of the world. So that makes sense. Okay, so this here is a Dridian and uh, he's attacking Bomark and I had a whole scene set up where uh, let's see, Bomark is not this guy, is hiding behind his Mulig, which is this creature who has a, a whole kind of camp set up on a platform on its back and it just moseys on down the road. Um, and so he's kind of flinching away while this big creature is behind him. I, I don't think I'm gonna take these much further. The idea I was hoping is that I take these models, I, I render them out and then I can either draw over them or do that, that line art style mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some things that I just need to uh, make from scratch. There, for instance, I'm going to start with. Let's see. I'll actually, start with. Here we go. A ring. So, I need to make this magical ring that Beaumark discovers. It starts as a. Um, let's see here. Let's go to our. Illustration. Let's go to King One. Oh, the ring. Oh, wait. Never mind. Actually, uh, oh yeah, the picture of it is in uh, the second book, which so I haven't processed this yet, but I can show you my first stab at it, just because I want to refer to it myself. Here we go, here's scans, here we go. Okay, so, um, this is on the hand of someone who stole the ring and tried it on, and they probably shouldn't have done that. But the, the idea is it's a, it's a snake, and in Talapar, snakes have six or eight legs. Um, and it started out as a piece of ornamentation or rather, it, it was in the form of ornamentation. It could be the form of whatever it wants to be on... The box. The box. Where's, where's my picture? Where's the box? Here it is. Okay, so here's our little our little monkey, Bo Mark's monkey pet. 
and there's this box with these snakes guarding the uh, the keyhole and uh, the box blows up and all the metal has melted and reformed into into this ring so I wanted to make an interesting kind of <coughs> snake grabbing its own tail it doesn't need to be eating its own tail um, it's probably best to start with a ring like this so one of the really cool things about ZBrush is uh, da, 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 once I can remember where it lives. I don't know what's cool about ZBrush. So it, let's it does find something. Out. Um, transform. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so I can sculpt with symmetry on. I believe Y is what I need. Radial symmetry. Okay, and now I can do things kind of like pottery on a potter's wheel. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to make a snaky shape, think the best so kind of want it to have a little bit of a spiral to it which actually come to think of it it might actually look at this spiral um i think the other there's kind of also spiral. a helix that kind yeah let's look at this helix i believe i can adjust the amount it spirals yes uh let's squash them together is the twist. Oh, no, I don't want to twist it like that. There's the radius. I know there's a way to do that with all of these random tools, but I think it would take me longer to figure it out there than to just do it this way. Okay, now I can use, oh, I need to make it a polymesh 3D. Now I can inflate it. That's it. Okay, so one of these is going to be a tail, and one of these is going to be a head. The head at the top. Hi, Jay Backy. Alita made it. Hooray. Oh, hey, while I'm doing this part, um, so what I normally do, I have a tradition of trying my best to pronounce the names of all the people who have subscribed since the last one. And so Ooh, this, this is, is going to be batch. your job. Okay, so you start at the bottom and just work your way up. Okay, time is 90077. Thank you. TJ, that was easy. Thank yeah, you. Wow. Paul Radich, thank you. Marcin, I don't know if all the all caps Marcin means each letter stands for something or if he just wants his name to be big and bold. She. Uh, Damien Cooper, thank you. Jackie. Thank you. And Lucifer. Hi, Lucifer. Lucifer it, has been a super, super valuable uh, beta reader for us. Yes. Uh, Aaron Miller. Thank you. Mitzi Bartlett. Thank you. Roy. Okay. This is hard. Yeah. Royman Boy. <laughs> How come Royman is so much harder to say than Roman? But it is. Okay. That's an Ma H, though. I would think it's Roma Boy. Oh, is that, you're right. It is an H and not an N. Oh, Roy Ma Boy. Yeah, you know what? Your name's just hard. Okay, Marcus Solheim. Thank you. Reanate82. Thank you. 
Napoleon Villagas, thank you. And Little Cthulhu. Little Cthulhu. Hold on, there's more. There's more. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Fabio LM, thank you. Oh, uh, Bradmir, uh, Bradmir, Mako. Oh, I forgot what that symbol means. Um, I used to be able to read Russian, but that's sort of behind me now. Okay, Tata Lee, thank you. Bill Boyer, thank you. The Wee Boodle Do, <laughs> I like that name. Uh, Isaqui Silva, thank you. Abraham Hernandez has subscribed. Thank you. Dan D. Baez. Thank you. Emily Daugherty. And Lisette Munoz. Thank you. All right. Good job. You did, you did just as poorly as I usually do, so I don't feel as bad. <laughs> uh, maybe not that bad. I know. You guys be the judge. Was that worse than I usually do? <laughs> A.G. Baki says, Mom is here, too. Hi, Lucy. Right now, it looks like a more eel. Almost a gulper. Yeah, that big unhinged jaw. Going to make him look kind of like this guy. What are you up to today, Aletha? Have you guys guys made that lufsa yet? Lufsa. Lufsa. So were you imagining these snakes? Are these genetic derivatives of Earth snakes or are they from another planet? They're from another planet. Okay. They could be native to Talifar or they could have come with some other species when Correct, correct. When sentient the, species the, the, the get... snakes that came from Earth or Legless. Okay, so you're thinking some of those exist on Talifar as well? Maybe? Well yeah, the sea snakes. Oh, okay. So are there, are any of the animals on Beaumark's native island, uh, earth derived? Yeah, the uh, seagulls. Okay. The um, terns, the sea eagles, which at one time were seahawks, but it, it, it brought to mind a certain sports team, which Too wasn't the point. <laughs> so we changed the name. Um, <clears throat> monkeys. Oh, you know what? I'm doing a I'm doing a dumb thing here. Okay, what's the dumb thing you're doing? I am creating what is essentially a um, symmetrical head, but I'm doubling the amount of work I need to do by doing it on this weird slant because I'm doing it on this ring. What I could be doing, rather, is I can start with a shape like this. I can turn on my symmetry. And then, let's see, is my symmetry correct? There we go. And 
somehow this is going to transform into a snake head. Mm -hmm. A rattlesnake. It's not there already? I thought, thought it was pretty much done. But, all right, I'll push it a little further. Van Mortis says, I have arrived. You may now rejoice. I am Hooray! rejoicing. Hurrah, hurrah. Looks like a sock puppet right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty muppety. It's funny how long a model can look really bad uh, before suddenly it just kind of comes together. I, I, I've watched people who do who do this kind of sculpting professionally in Hollywood, and yeah, it's the same thing. So I don't feel bad about it looking like a sock puppet for a long time. So in your mind, what do you think differentiates a snake with legs from a lizard? Well, I have forgotten. <laughs> Good answer. I need to Google the differences between lizards and snakes uh, again. And it isn't, it isn't primarily the lack of legs because there are legless lizards. And there are snakes who have leg bones, the vestigial well, leg bones. Well, inside, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that are sort of structurally support inner um, organs. Right. Lizards, lizards have necks and snakes don't. Yeah. Snakes have really long necks. <laughs> Just the tip of their tail is their body. No. Uh, as in like the, the vertebrae uh, has a different function that way. Is that what you mean, Dad? Yeah, I think so. I think lizards can actually move their head like most quadrupeds can. That but, makes sense. Uh, you know, a snake's head is directly to the to the spine. Right. So they can't really turn their head. They have to turn their body, which makes snakey, snakes look so snaky and creepy. Right. <clears throat> Dot Lib says, hi Josh, hi Rose, Merry Christmas to you both, indeed, and to you too. Dottie B. Dottie B. Yeah, T-T-I-E. You know <laughs> I wonder if I shouldn't put on my glasses for that. How far will it make it worse? We'll see. Ah, yes, so it is. Really great lumpy mashed potato look going on right now.
it's always a, a tug of war in my brain, and this is the case for many artists I know, between wanting to dive into the details too early uh -huh. and really needing to focus on getting the, the forms and volumes established first. Right, right. Um, I understand that. It's one reason why I, I, I can't make the, these clay things, because I can't do all the steps in between before you get to the fine detail. I want to jump right into fine detail. Yeah. That's the fun yeah, part work. for most people. I don't know if it's most artists. It seems like the best artists I know spend a lot more time on this time, this thing that I'm doing, getting the, the forms and the, the general anatomy, the flow, the movement, the balance. Um, I don't think it's necessarily because that's what they love the most. I think they've just learned that you distribute your time that way and you end up with a better final piece. I think the, the same goes with writing, you know, probably any creative process. When you get your foundation, your structural foundation solid before you start spending a ton of time doing the little detail stuff. I was uh, thinking about uh, this morning about the poster, the meme that I've seen showing, you know, the iceberg with the little tip sticking out and the huge body of ice underneath and thinking how that's true of any creative endeavor. Mm -hmm. When you finally get to see that exquisite little tip, it took all this ice underneath to get it up there. Yeah. I think that's a big part of what makes the Dunning-Kruger yeah. effect uh, as powerful as it is. You, Remind me what the... The, the Dunning-Kruger effect is... Is that the one where incompetent people think they're competent? Yeah, they, they'll look at any, any endeavor, whether it's coaching a sports team or building a skyscraper or making a video game and say, why does it take them so long? No, look, it's just, just do it this way. Like, I can tell you how to do it. Just do it like that. <laughs> These dummies, why don't they just do it the, the <laughs> way that I know would obviously work better? That's my question. Yeah. <laughs> Van Morda has a, I think that's a crooked smile. Uh, is he raising his hand? I think he might be oh, raising his hand. Oh, it's him raising his hand. Yes, we see you. <laughs> do, do you have a question for the whole class, Van Morda? Or are you just stretching? Would here be a good time to mention that we always welcome other people who want to beta read or read ahead of time so they can have a review ready on launch day? Absolutely. Well, now you know. <laughs> we, we'd love to, to um, uh, involve many people on our team. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Anyone who wants to beta read for us, uh, let me know in the comments and I will send you a link to our Google Doc. Now it's got all those beautiful illustrations in it, so you don't have to feel like you're reading as much. Although, I mean, you should enjoy the reading part. It's, yeah. it's a good story. What, what most people don't know is that even fairly large names like Gary Sinet, Sinais, he just put it, he's putting out a novel and he's invited people to join his launch team because that's how you get discovered now is you have to have a lot of friends who love you dearly and they write reviews to put on uh, websites because like if uh, if we're if we mention Amazon which is not the only review site out there but the more reviews that pour in on any particular day, the more attention Amazon pays to it. And then Amazon is more likely to say, if you bought this book, what about this book? Yeah. And they don't do it for books that have no reviews. So it's crucial in ways that people... Even even uh, negative or middle reviews. It, it does, it's yeah, it, it almost doesn't matter if they're bad. I mean, if they're negative, if they're yeah, positive. Just, any attention. just so they know a lot of people are reading this and feel strongly enough about it to say something about it. And yeah. reviews don't need to be long. I mean, mine are mostly short. 
mine are wow this is a great space opera so if you like space opera you'll like this book um, yeah real deep insight there uh, <laughs> but, the, but that's literally all you have to do is say I enjoy this book because I like the adventure I like this book because the drawings fascinated me I like this you know just one sentence will do it yep although longer is nice too Uh, some people will pad out their reviews to look more significant, I guess, by sort of reiterating the plot. And I'm not sure that's always a good thing to do because it's really easy then to give away something. Yeah, kind of spoil, it. <laughs> kind of spoil the book. <laughs> I have friends who, who don't know what to do with somebody saying they like their book, but then they gave away the ending. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do you tell them don't do it that way? Hmm. I, yeah, I, that's I, why I like one sentence reviews. Also, I I read reviews. Some people don't, but I do. And sometimes, a negative review will be what sells me on a book. You know, if somebody on what says they didn't like about it, this you know? writer is just too lyrical, too poetic, too long, too detailed, too you know. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't like reading it because of that. I'll go, oh, poetic, lyrical. Let me look at this, yeah. and then I'll read the first page. Ah. Let's see. Waving but asking a question. Mm, sure. What are you giving us? For <laughs> 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 we're, we're giving you a Twitch stream. Um, Van Morta says, besides... <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Besides Rose's amazing presence. Oh, yeah. What, what more could anyone want? You know, it's interesting how some creatures have teeth, you know, a bony thing inserted into a jaw. And other things have a jaw with serrations mm -hmm. that function as teeth, but they really aren't teeth like fish a lot of fish have uh well fi frogs. some frogs frogs too okay. yeah point where given that this is an itty bitty ring don't want to get too much more detailed with it frogs do with their little teeth? Well, they use the teeth to sort of hold the, the prey and then and then they use their eyeballs to squish it, push it down their throat. Oh, yeah. That's why when they, they swallow their, their eyes kind of sink down into their head. Mm -hmm. And to me that's like, but eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> I guess when the, when the rest of your body is soft and squishy as well. All right. So now we have a little head, and now we can go back to our... Where's our little ring shape? Here we go. No, that was not our ring. Where's our... Huh. Did it? Did you throw it away? Did you eat it? Huh. Well, no, I just saw it just a little while ago. It's this one. Yeah, oh, there. Sure enough, it is. Okay. Okay, so we go there. So now you want to chop that uh, head off and insert your head. This head, just slightly larger. 
Okay, so I'll take this guy. And you know what you're doing, that's amazing. Yeah. So now he's got to turn. Oh. Ooh. Let's take off his symmetry. <laughs> yes. But then he's going to be compressed when you squash him down into a ring anyway. Uh, no, this is, this is the ring. Oh, you're saying uh, this way? No, um, that that image that you first showed us. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a um, it's round flat. Uh, right. The, it's com it's a compressed circle. Yeah, it's, I, a, it's a band. Yeah, and I, I don't. That's not what I want. That's why I'm doing this. Oh, because so I'm, you're gonna I'm not redo trying to that drawing. No, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this I'm going to take an image of this and I'm going to in Photoshop stick it over the hand Ta -da! cover up the, the old ring tricks of the trade guys there's mm -hmm. okay, so another thing I'm probably going to want to make Actually, let me go ahead and save this one add it uh, where do I put illustrations like this? I have a common folder for things that could go in, in multiple books. I think I'm just gonna say. Like the, of this different species, so you could have a list of the species in each book. Yeah, um, I'm gonna make an odds and ends. Oh, odd, odd and ends. <laughs> odds. Let's see. And ends. Okay. I'm sure there's a better name for it, but that's what it's going to be for now. Uh, snake ring. I got to tell you. Okay, tell me. All right. So, you know, we, we've talked about the about my idea for a book where we're going into the, the jungle continent that has not been explored, right? Right, right, on Utali. Yeah, and that's where Here Be Dragons, yes. which I think would actually be a good name for the book, although I'm sure there's a million books already named that, because that is that is traditionally what was on old-timey maps. When you, right. go, when you go off the edge of right. the map, that's right. what you would say. Okay, so I had that short story from um, Bridges. Right. Uh, uh, the anthology bridges uh, set on Utali, just sort of as an introduction for what's there. Exactly. It, where where can people find that if they want to? Uh, it's well, it's on Amazon. Um, it's uh, N I W A, meaning Northwest Independent Writers Association uh, anthology bridges. They, they put out themed anthologies, and uh, I've got one in Bridges and one in Artifact. Let's see. I'm going to find it real quick just so people can know. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, say that again Northwest. N I W A. I W A. Space. Bridges. Oh. No, or maybe you have to say anthology. No response. Oh, you put Nina. What? No, why did they put Nina? Ah, come on. Uh, N I W A. Yeah. Right. Well, the, does it matter that they should be capital? Probably not. No, I want to push. So keep going. Ah, well, now that's annoying. Maybe if I spell it out. Maybe. North, Northwest. Uh, in independent. 
Oh, Northwest has an R. Yeah, it's not Northwest. That's how Easterners would say North Northwest. People uh, from Maine. Would they? Go Northwest. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Writers Association. Let's see if we can spell it independent correctly. Oh, there's Artifact. Okay, so go there and then see what else they have. Okay, so we, we do have a, a short piece Story in, in there, here. Yeah, that focuses on a Ramashah. Mm -hmm. And they should, uh, they, they should be have, when you look at this and there's also that. Uh, related items. Keep going down. It wouldn't have gone away. I hope not. Well, um, hit the, hit the Kindle so you go specifically to that page. Okay. And uh, oh, I think that's what it is right now. Well, maybe it should be Bridges, a collection of short stories, then. Like this is artifact, a collection of short stories. Uh, get rid um, of get rid of the Northwest Independent Writers Association and anthology. Yeah, get rid of the anthology too. Now, your duck is my duck. <laughs> no, that that's sponsored. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, there's the there's anthology that, that Aletha, Aletha has a story. A.J. Baki has a story in. Mm -hmm. But you know. Amazon frustrates me sometimes. <laughs> I guess because they didn't sell enough, and so therefore it's they're going to pretend anyone? like it doesn't exist. Huh. That's why you need um, reviews. Indeed. Because otherwise your book disappears on Amazon and they won't show it. Anyway, so I thought I thought a fun way to lean into that idea of um fulfilling more of those fantasy tropes in that in that land um, would be to do um dragons and wizards because we, we have magicians i thought it might be interesting if we had an enclave of early settler you know humans who who left the wreckage uh went off it to and they're the kind of the lost tribe of magicians there and they're essentially um, they buy their own PR to where they say they are wizards and they're training people with you know that so, so they have a whole cult around their technology okay making it and and where whereas the the mainland magicians who are still at the crash site are very in touch with their you know, human past and earth and history and all that kind of stuff. Um, these guys are more uh, shrouded in, in mythos. Okay. And... Um, well, I like the drawing you made of what would be the equivalent of a dragon, which looks nothing like a dragon. I wouldn't say it looks nothing like a dragon, but it doesn't look like a traditional trophy dragon. Yes. Okay, not like a, a China, an oriental or a western dragon. True. Maybe it looks like a down under dragon. <laughs> Australian dragon? Yeah. I'm not sure what those look like. shadowing things do so that's uh, masking it off oh so I okay. can move just a part of it without accidentally moving the rest so you can see a... oh start 
tapering this tail down a bit. Uh, people don't know what beta readers are. Those are people who look at a manuscript after it's just about ready. And you read it, and with your perspective, you say, this worked, this didn't work. And then we try to figure out why it didn't work and how to fix that, or why it did work, and yay. Um, and like, filter out things that turn out to be offensive, that we didn't know would be offensive because it's not in our thinking, our repertoire, our experience. Like using the term Oriental Dragon. Would that, is that offensive? I feel like Oriental now is almost always considered, I could be wrong about that. I should ask some of my friends. Well, I was but, trying to, I was trying to encompass China yeah. and Japan. And, and they Korea. have similar ill-like dragons. Yeah. And they both have positive ideas about those dragons. Yeah, in general, and, the more east you go, the more positive dragons are as an entity, as a mythological entity. But I can't say Oriental. I don't know if you can or not. Uh, I've just heard that in general, uh, you should stay away from that word. I, I'm guessing so it does. So like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So if you know and you read something that bothers you, we want to know. And so we can fix it. You know, I mean, if I offend people, it's because you know, I want to do it deliberately, not stupidly, not inadvertently, not ignorantly. Yes. Let me do it on purpose. And hopefully just do it to people who deserve to be insulted. Yeah. Not because of something they can't Yeah, right. Control. We're not going to punch down. I get that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make a quick little snake leg here. Oh, you lost your picture of the snake. There it is. I was about to say it looks like a baby tooth, but then you made it longer. Yeah. I don't know if your people know, but I lived in Japan for four years and loved it. Oh man, I enjoyed Japan. Yeah, we, we need to go back to Japan sometime. Yeah, we do. I haven't been there since I was seven. Seven, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm sure a little bit has changed. Broken toes right there. <laughs> Come on, rotate. Hmm. Rotate. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. These are just going to be. Ah, oh, Ben Morty says, I want to go. And I'm assuming you mean to Japan, which is. Such an incredibly fantastic country. Of course, I thought that way about Korea too, and Taiwan and the Philippines. I just fell in love with all those countries.
thinking about offense, yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to offend people that I love just through ignorance. Um, I was on the board once of an organization that uh, had uh, people with a variety of disabilities, um, including uh, autism, including just a variety of disabilities, and they would make crafts. They would make things out of indigo cloth that they dyed themselves with different patterns. And then when they got enough money, they would send the people to a big house in Battleground, if you can believe it, in Battleground for a vacation. Hmm. And Battleground's this tiny little city in Washington State. And I have no idea how they picked on that area, but they did. And it was so fun going there to their festivals, uh, going places with them, taking the vacationers to different places in the state. Um, where yeah. where were they coming from? They were coming from Japan. Oh, okay. That's how that story connects. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, I really would not want to offend people by using words they don't like. Yeah. And you know, and, and that keeps, it, it keeps changing because what was all right 20 years ago isn't okay today. Yeah, that's where it gets tricky and that's where the, the whole social justice realm gets muddy because there are so many people who, if corrected gently, would be like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll now add that to my list of things to consider. Uh, but we're in such a caustic atmosphere now where the where people who get offended uh, they score some kind of points from it or something and so they they just seem to relish attacking people who make these mistakes as though the people as as though the only reason a person would make a mistake like that is out of malice out of malice yeah yeah, yeah. well you know I had I um, back long before the internet um, I was in a, a critique group that we sent our manuscripts by snail mail. That's all we had. And literal snails, right? Yeah, oh, literal. Yeah. And so I got back a critique on one of my novels, and this person just tore into me for being so disrespectful to people with disabilities. Hmm. And, you know, especially people with cerebral palsy, because I said these awful things. And I was like, really the last people I've ever been. Really, really, really. You know, I mean, I belong to autism groups and a variety of, of, of disability groups. And to find out that I had offended my friend. So I went and called up a friend with cerebral palsy. And I said, please tell me, what did I say offensive in this? And I read her the offensive paragraph. And she said, you want to read that again? And so I read it again. And she says, um... I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. so I guess some people see it and some won't. Yeah, and it, there, it, it's tricky because anyone who's who has dis well, anyone who is not completely you know in the norm of society, they will have developed uh, a they can develop a thick skin to it and become blind to things that could offend, you know, pe people who suffer from the same thing as they do, uh, but haven't developed a thick skin. And so you can kind of be misled if you tend to be around people who have that thick skin. Ah, that's true. You know, true. it's kind of like the, the, there's... No, it's just life. Yeah. Um, and you get, you do, you're right. If if you if you live around disabilities, if you have disabilities, you get to be fairly nonchalant about it. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's something Heather runs into a lot because she 
posts a lot of stuff about her health issues. You know, she has all these chronic, debilitating issues, and the, the thing she's always having to push back against is, is people saying, oh, you know, poor, poor you, what, what, you know, what can we do to help? This is so awful, and, it, you know, kind of a catastrophizing of it as opposed to simply a recognition that, yeah, it's, this is a different kind of life, and it's rough, and sorry, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, but but the reason she does it is is she ends up helping lots of people who right. suffer with this stuff and right. uh, silently because they think they don't want to burden people with it or they're too afraid to die you know to get diagnoses for it you know all these kind of things um, so yeah this is different people approach life very differently and yeah they they really do I <laughs> I just had the experience last week somebody posted something on Facebook. And, you know, and I kind of wanted to help the guy uh, because he was in a sad situation and I thought maybe I could end up giving him some imicide. Well, I should know better than that. But um, <laughs> I did anyway. So I asked him, I said, by any chance, are you, uh, do you have Asperger's? Are you on the... the autism spectrum. The, autism spectrum. Yeah, I believe and so I said, you know, of course, on Facebook, yeah. so it's public. Well, oh, man. Um, at first he was not happy with me saying that and, and sort of responded mad. Uh, but then what came on, after he understood where I was coming from, uh, then other people chimed in and said, you used bad words. <laughs> Those were very nice words you said. And I'm like, what words? <laughs> Asperger's, autism, what? What was the, what was the bad word? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and so I had to point out, I have absolutely no shame over the fact that I have Asperger's. I have no shame that I have a slightly different brain structure than a lot of other people. Um, there's, so it didn't occur to me that asking somebody that would be t accusing them of being something awful. Right. Yeah. It's like saying, do you like sports? or? Yeah. Or, are you I mean, bad at swimming? You know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, it, it, yeah. it's not a bad thing. It's just a descriptor, like rich, poor. Um, uh, I forget. I gave a long list of things. But they're just descriptors of things. We all have things we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And we have to deal with the bodies we're born in. We have to deal with uh, the social strata we were born in. And none of it's bad it just is a thing and so but I have to remember that other people don't feel that way you know you're right you get lack of physical and so you forget that other people feel sensitive or worried or upset about this thing yeah and so then the person who told me I didn't use very nice words I said, oh, I'm so sorry, well, for, you know, um, please forgive me. I didn't realize you had that situation. <laughs> you know, like, she was sorry I had Asperger's. And it's like, why? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why she was thought that was a bad thing. Well, in general, if any, anything you have that deviates from the norm is going to cause some amount of friction in your life, some amount of difficulties, you know. Wow, well, although there is that, sure. Um, but I've come to realize there isn't a single person out there who doesn't have difficulty. Yeah, of some form or another. Oh, let's see. Um, Mortis has always wanted to go, but way too poor. Yeah, it costs a lot of money to go to Japan or China or Philippines. Um, AJ Baki says, I was talking to mom and stuff. I'm back now. Well, I didn't know you left. Um, <laughs> AJ Baki says, mom says, hi. Hi. We were just advertising uh, an anthology that you were in while you were gone, so... While, pay, while we were trying to find, to while we were trying to find our anthology, which we couldn't find, uh, yours popped up. So, <laughs> well, it was 
an object lesson yeah. into why we ha must have reviews because Amazon will pretend like even if you search doesn't exist. directly for the name, it will not give you results. I mean, I ordered it. I have copies in my bookcase. So why did Amazon pretend like it doesn't exist? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, that's all right, because the rights have reverted to me, and we're going to put out an anthology of short stories. We're also going to give them out as prizes a year before we publish them to people who subscribe to your newsletter. We'll give them free little stories that will introduce new places in the world to them. Mm -hmm. For some reason, my little move gizmo is not doing what it's supposed to do. When you click this little arrow, it's supposed to reset it in such a way where I can set it to right there, and it should stay. And it's not, and that's really bothering me. I have Ooh, no why idea why that's happening. Why can't you glue that on? You'd think there, there's a mechanism you have for pinning it. There is. Uh, it's just not working right now. Oh. <laughs> that's a, well, it's very annoying. Huh. So I have to move things really awkwardly instead. Well, you know, working with you and having you make drawings that are different than what I wrote and therefore I adjust what I wrote or you adjust it. And that reminds me that when I was younger, I thought, you know, books arrived. A, a, an author sat down, wrote the book, and it was published. I did not realize the author writes the first draft and then edit, edits it into a second draft, then edits it into a third draft, and then does beta, and then does more editing because of the uh, feedback, mm -hmm. uh, sends, in, in our case, to a professional editor, changes according to feedback, and, uh, and, and now make changes because of your drawings. You come up with a neater idea. We had this idea, but as we look at the total package, well, you know what, this would make it even neater. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's an interesting process uh, that we have uh, come up with uh, these these set of novels that I think everybody's going to enjoy. Well, everybody who likes fantasy is going to enjoy uh, because there's been so much thought and process put into it. Yeah, the, the process of visual development is interesting um in that it it shows where there's a problem that you didn't visualize yeah and it's not not necessarily something that i mean e even when i'm writing as as a visual thinking person um until i actually put it on the page or sculpt it um i you know i just don't think about these kinds of things Trying to mesh this all together. Okay. Um, so yeah, there. I, I think there's a level of polish that our book is going to have that um, even a lot of professional, you know, big big named authors don't have because they, you know, they have only one editor. Yeah, and and they're not. They have haven't necessarily hired a visual designer. I think Brandon Sanderson has been doing more of that where in, in his books, you know, he'll hire uh, artists to help him out. You know, he's rendering the runes or the, the I really like the drawings kind of in the last, um, uh, okay. Stormlight not, Archives. Not the Radiant Way, huh? Stormlight Archives. Stormlight book? Archives, yeah. yes. 
Yeah, me too. Okay, so... Oh, I should not have joined the stuff together yet, because I, I would have preferred to pose those toes a little bit, but also it really doesn't matter that it's going to be, it's going to be, you know... Well, it could be one of those this open, big open rings. It, so. No, it's, 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 uh, it's how I want it. I just wanted the, the, the toes legs to, to, to yeah. grab on a little mm -hmm. better, but yeah, I, again, no one, no one will see it this size. Well, I wrote it as a stylized. Right. <laughs> and you're trying to make it realistic. Yep. Well, I, th I thought, um. What was neat about having it be realistic is that Beaumark is coming from an island where um, realism is not is not a part of their uh, cultural artistic lexicon. Right. Uh, well, I guess that's not totally true. They're, the portraits of the kings they do are pretty accurate. Um, but the idea of sculpting a a sculpture of a animal that looks exactly like the animal. That's that's not something you see in almost any traditional art. They're they're always stylized in some interesting way. Um, I'm trying to think of exceptions to that. <laughs> Morta says that would make a nice drink holder. Spin up the three D printer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I am wanting to spin up the 3D printer soon, actually. Got to get uh, Scola, Scola 3D printed. I hope that I can actually sell sculptures of him at uh, NorwestCon. That would be amazing. I'm hoping you'll have some posters to sell there, too. Oh, yeah. And, Posters, easy. And, yeah. and bookmarks that we give away. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we'll sell them, too, for a nominal fee. Uh-oh. Unrecoverable error. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fortunately, ZBrush is uh, generally very good about saving backups, so I'll probably be able to not lose any work. Hey, Magic Penguin. You're going to use Who on your future album cover, Scola? A Magic Penguin. Oh, so what music does Magic Penguin do? Um, kind of hard rock metal, as far as I know, that I've heard from him. But maybe he can uh, send us some, so you could have it playing in the background. Yeah, if you want free publicity, Mr. Soto, you just send me your music. I'll make you a, a huge star with all, all three and a half people who watch the stream. <laughs> Guaranteed record sales. One thing ZBrush is not good at is letting you position the window easily. It wants to fight. Fight, fight, fight the whole time. But you know, I would like to sell ads in the back of each book to similar novels. A friend, Wayne Batson, does that. He yeah. Offers he he'll say he'll, he'll you know you get x amount of space for a little ad in the back of his book if you send him thirty dollars anyway it's pretty nominal fee and uh, i think it's neat that he's finding a way to encourage other people uh, promote other people while simultaneously making theoretically some sort of profit at it mm -hmm. Thirty dollars a pop does not seem. Uh, well, it's worth enough to, it it's to, enough to hire a proof editor, a proofreader. Thirty dollars? Well, no, I'm because he sells more than one. Oh. Uh, the 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 one that I put an ad in, uh, there were about six of us. I okay. put in an ad for the textbook. Gotcha.
and you know and that was a one-time expense but now it's out there all the time mm -hmm. which is the best way to do things oh we're getting lots of comment now oh no that's your subscribe to thing Eric is saying metal experimental. I'll have a new track soon, or at least one. Awesome. That's Frank's, or that's Josh's favorite. Usually. Depends on which way the experiment goes, I guess. <laughs> So, Magic Penguin, are you a solo uh, musician, or are you in a band? I think he's going to music school. Or was. Is that what you're doing at Art, in Art Institute before they uh, folded and you lost everything? <gasps> oh, how awful! Where was that? Uh, the Art Institute had... Well, which one? There's one in Seattle, there's one in Pennsylvania, there's... Uh, the Art Institute, uh, I mean, they're, they're all, it's a franchise. Right. And so I believe the whole The whole thing, chain? I think so. Oh. That's where I got my degree. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember the details of it. They were pretty much just a diploma mill. They didn't, they didn't care if you had any talent or promise if uh if the government could get a loan for you they were happy to have you well i thought they taught you a lot they did not um th mm, depending on the professors i had enough professors that were decent enough i think i think the big takeaway uh i had to learn was just don't accept your first idea okay and uh, that's a very important design and art lesson. Yes, it is. One that uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm purposely keeping this really loose and sloppy. Just because we got a lot of illustrations to get through. And this is going to be pretty small on the page. Speaking of music, I uh, I talk been talking to um, McLean Daimler, who is the composer for um, Guild Wars Two. Say the word again. McLean Daimler. Yeah, McLean Daimler. Oh, of, com a composer. He's. I a know what a composer, composer is. The, for uh, Guild Wars Two. Guild Wars. There we yes. go. Yes. And I was asking him if uh, he would do some Tales from Telefar music specifically Ooh, for the so cool. for the audio book because I really want to have like introduction music. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. So he, he seemed excited by the by the idea. So Ooh, that'd be great. He's gonna give me the friend discount. So <laughs> excited about that. Uh, look, looking to gather uh, 
like reference for the the style that I want, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I I don't know if it's the best way to go, but I definitely my first impulse is kind of the John Williams. Uh, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, you know, that kind of very, a very um, memorable Full kind band. of hook. Yeah. That, well, that McLean specializes in that. He does very orchestral okay. kind of uh, fantastic stuff. So, pretty excited about that. way to do this probably I can just do let's see, my it still seems like his face should be flattened on the finger side yeah it, it should be but since it's going to be superimposed over a finger you want to see that oh, work anyway okay. so we will end up assuming it yeah okay uh, actually probably a good thing to do here would be to Okay. Well, of course, you know that this will be one of the things you need to make to mm -hmm. sell at the booth. A ring, a brooch, a necklace. Yeah, that's guaranteed to make you burst into flames if you put it on. Yeah, that one. Letha says she's at 555 pages read of your books today. Read of her books. Nice. I can see it's not 666. Oh, that'd be even better, honest. Wow. <laughs> Letha says, uh, AJ Bucky says that's an interesting looking finger. And your finger doesn't look like that? So annoying sometimes. Oh, where did my snake go? Come on. Well, okay. The more things There's any me. program can do, the more things can go wrong. That's for sure. AJ Baki says those kind of rings at a booth would be fun, or maybe to spend stream points on, or for giveaways or other special things. Good point. Wait a minute, this is not. I don't know what you're trying to do. I don't know whether or not you're succeeding. You know, uh, it's always a series of failures and successes in rapid succession. The fail fast concept. Yes. So, I'm trying to make a, a 
hand that is similar to. <laughs> AG back, he says, though I think the novelty of instantly bursting into flame might be short lived. Yes, yes, it would be. Although well, very entertaining for those around you. Now, where in the. You know. I looked at the picture of the hand. Uh, is it in here? I really need it now. Oh, oh, right. Uh, well, here we go. Okay, yeah. so I'm just gonna I'm gonna open this in Photoshop. Okay. So uh, basically, I'm I'm wanting to turn this into into that finger. Okay. Uh, it'll make superimposing the ring easier. shadow will fall across it uh, in a more realistic way than it would fall across a, a plain cylinder. Okay. okay. Um, so, why are you not gold anymore? Be gold. Uh. <laughs> okay. Fill up. Oh, I didn't have material set. Okay. I don't know why I'm having to go through this process again, but, oh well. Ta-da! Okay, so, now, where is my render? Here's my rendering options. I'm not sure why it matters, the pictures aren't in color. Uh, this reflective will still come across. Got it. So, let's... What's the thing about... Shadow. Well, let's just see what it looks like with this. Will it, oh, it does cast a shadow. Okay, beautiful. Uh, okay, and our hand looks like that. So we're kind of looking down at it. Kind of like this. Cat. Fine. Now, normally I would want to render this out in a high resolution, blah, 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 but because uh, it's on a, it's fairly small and it's on a small illustration, it doesn't really matter. And I had my stupid cursor in the way, so let's move the cursor. Okay. Copy that, and now paste it into here. Almost gotten 10,000 pages read of my book this month. Wow. So how is that compared oh, to like last year? Oh, she says it's at 9,946. I'm assuming that means on Amazon. And that's a great level. Congratulations. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of erase. Erase. Yeah. The, the shortcut keys for making your brush bigger and smaller are different in ZBrush and Photoshop. And whenever I bounce from one to the other, it's a super obnoxious process of relearning the muscle memory. <laughs> Every time we visited, uh, came back from Japan, I'd have to relearn to drive on the right side of the road. Oh, that sounds terrible. You know, of course, then when I get back to Japan, I got to learn again to drive on the left side. And uh, going back and forth was really hard for me. 
I kept thinking, I bet other people, they don't have that difficulty, but I don't know. Maybe oh, they but do. they do. That sounds hard. There's a, a bike that someone built that reversed. If you turned left, it would actually turn right and vice versa. Oh, yeah, and they couldn't ride it. Um, you could learn to ride it. It was extremely difficult. But then the funny thing was, to it was the same amount of difficulty to learn to ride a normal bike again. Oh! <laughs> Afterwards. I bet the so. brain got really unhappy about that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, A.J. Baki says, in comparison to all other months, um, I've never gotten that much even in two months before. Then she says, which is true, this, she's, you're crushing it, girl. Okay, then she says, that ring is super cool. I want one or ten. But if you could disable the bird in the flames part, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have to do that for um, legal reasons, I guess. All right, so this red here, this is a mask, and this is me just cutting out the part that I want to actually keep. Or I guess, I guess you consider it the other way. I'm cutting out the part I don't want to keep. So you're cutting out negative space. Yeah. Probably, let's see, a good way to do this would be kind of fade it. Van Morta says, or double the bursting into flames and use it as a quick escape device. <laughs> you can point it yeah. at people. AJ Baki says, if people burst into flames, they won't be able to buy the rest of the books. Oh, and yes, we want them to oh, buy the rest good of point. the books. Yeah, yeah. There's a good reason. Van Morta <laughs> says it tripled the price. Oh, he's caught on to our thing. Yeah. Um, well, it is true. We want to make the first book very, very cheap. And then we want to make the prices of the other books more realistic. We figure if the first book is really cheap, that's the same as a sample. Yeah. or close to the same as the sample. And by the end of that sample, you'll have a really good idea about whether or not you ever want to read anything by us again or not. Yep. A.G. Bikey says, are you thinking at $1.99 for the first book? Possibly. Ed Mortis says 199.99. <laughs> Don't think we'll get many sales that way. Although maybe, you know, it's the prestige thing where people will assume it must be very good if it's that expensive, like with wine. Yeah, there you go. You could also have it at 2.99 and then run 99 cent promos, certainly. I gave Mikey says, but you know that already. Yes. We're, we're still trying to think what would be the best marketing thing today because a lot of marketing things that worked really well five years ago don't work that well anymore. And I can attest to, I filled up my Kindle with all these free books. Mm -hmm. And then I found out they weren't worth that price. <laughs> And so I don't download a lot of free books anymore, not unless I already know I like that author. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you can barely tell what's going on here, uh, which is fine. Uh, the, oh, you know what? I should make a picture that I totally forgot. I was going to have a close up of this ring for uh, an illustration for the first book anyway, so. 
so you'll have to revisit the issue. Uh, and I'll want to do a high-res version of the sculpt anyway to 3D print it and actually make rings. That would make sense. Yeah. Uh, Van Morta says, five bucks is always a good price with sales. I was thinking $4.99 because what's happened is almost everybody's selling their books at $2.99 now, which I like. I like to buy a $2.99 book. But uh, a lot of people now think that indicates poor quality. Yeah. And I don't want anyone to think a book is poor quality. I mean, it might be a book they don't like because they don't like the subject, um, they don't like the style, but I don't want them to think it's a bad book because they look at that price and go, oh, all the crap books are that price. Yeah. And um, whatever. So, so uh, let's see. He says, do the new thing games are doing episodes make them buy each chapter. Actually, I heard of someone doing that. I was trying to think, how could we do that? Um, uh, uh, Decker is now dividing his books into like four sections. Hmm. But of course he has to make each section have a beginning and an end. And then what he's discovered is that uh, after people have bought each of the four books, then they still go by the entire book. Hmm. Let's see. Um, Van Mortis says to continue story, pay 99 cents. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially. I, I don't know if we can sell chapters. Um, I mean, that, that's what we're doing by making a trilogy, right? Is, I mean, well, you are reading right. the first third of a story. That's true. That's true. Uh, all the rest of the novels are going to be standalones. But uh, the first one got too long. Yeah. Although eventually we will sell them all together. Okay, AJ Baki says mine are all two ninety nine. I don't know. I really drag my feet at spending four ninety nine on a book when I'm doing the buying. There are very few authors I'll pay that much for. And AJ Baki says just sell the whole books. <laughs> Van Morta says, you could do an extended version. has more drawings, behind the writing, etc. Sell it double the price. Yes, that we're definitely going to do for future, uh, for future books. Because um, it takes me so long to do the illustrations by myself that the, the next books that we publish are going to just have maybe the one, one yeah the cover maybe one or two illustrations but uh, nothing that holds up production like these have been held up and then, and then over we, time either i will work with other artists or i myself will be in a position you know if say say it gets so big i can quit my job and w woo, work on this full time, time. Yeah, and then we could do yeah so. yeah like terry pratchett when he found out he lost money by going to work he, that's when he quit work <laughs> okay so i made a mistake by flattening this image before i did okay here we go Sounds like we should have Van Morta be our business manager. There you go. Uh, get a business degree real quick, Van Morta. Well, I, I found out that Damon Rath has been doing uh, night college to become a geologist or getting a degree in geology. Ooh, geology is so, so cool. Yeah, so hopefully he'll be our first uh, full-time geologist. Definitely need one of those. Okay. So this little grungy thing that I put over, this is just a way to keep all the all the images in the book kind of consistent because some of the some of the internal imagery is is slightly different, but when they all have this kind of grungy frame border around them, it kind of helps tie them together. Okay. So I, I wrote a little script that does that super fast. I just drag the layer over, I hit F3, and it goes through this big, long process, and uh -huh. it gives me a grungy frame. Oh. All right, so we've 
got our chart in. Van Morda says, I, LOL, I work at a library. I can barely afford books. <laughs> yeah, I bet so. But see, this is where you get your library to buy these books. That's right. Dottie B says, Van Morda, that is so ironic. Okay, so I'm trying to think if I'm doing an illustration just of this ring, do I need to give him his other... Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. It's going to be. It's going to blow your mind. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do a pinned. A pinned. This guy. Again, this uh, special finger here. Oh, it doesn't matter which one I grow or shrink. this as a finger and then I'm going to put it up. Then Morty says I don't have time to read either it's audio books or nothing I am writing Christmas working Christmas Eve and libraries are open on Christmas Eve Wow it's a hardcore <laughs> library um, but yeah my husband's tearing through books now because of audio books yeah. Which I think is great. Man, I wish I could listen to audio books when I'm doing stuff. Okay. Um, then Mortis says, Woo will be closed and I will have the entire place to myself. Baby Baki says, Sounds nice and quiet. Then Mortis says, Doing inventory. That's probably important because that's when you find out, I guess, which books have been stolen. Um, A.G. Baki says, I've been suffering through the audio files of the hidden level today so I can approve them. Suffer through them? Why are, why are they suffering? Yeah, I want to talk to you sometime, A.J. Baki, about uh, how you produce audio books. Okay, Van Mortis says, nope, we will be closed. Van Mortis says, just me and a scanner. Sounds scandalous. Oh, scannerific. Okay, so here's our finger. Here's our uh, ring. Now I can do this. Boom. Ta da! Now we All right. Nice. Now it's, uh, it's not a great ring. It's really thin on that spot. Uh, but what I can do now is, in theory, I can move it around. Yep, yeah, and it keeps go. the keeps that cylinder booleaned out. So if I was if I'm gonna take this further and actually make a physical product that gets 3D printed, I can build, you know, start with this and build it right, off of that. Right. So it's pretty cool. Now I have to find a good... A.G. Baki says, Heidi recommended a narrator, and the narrator, Marianne, weirdly accepted the 2020 royalty offer on AXC. So far, I don't think she's regretted it. She keeps accepting my new offers. To rule Earth should be done end of April, I think. Yeah, it's nice if you can find someone who will accept a share of the royalties but it's a big gamble for them yeah because if the book makes no money then they make no money and they just spend a week of their life wasted um, yeah I was trying to figure out how AJ Baki came up with the money to hire a narrator but she does Shares royalties, okay. Oh, AJ Baki says she meant ACX. 
uh, she's a great narrator. I just dislike listening to my books because I want to go back and fix things. Oh. I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly so. I don't think I go through the books any time that I don't change a hundred little things. Yeah. Great art is never finished, only abandoned. So I think I'm gonna try something here real quick. Uh, oh yeah, render. So I'm using Keyshot as a render. Oh, and that's, I'm guessing Keyshot's not gonna respect this Boolean, so. How do I, how do I bake this Boolean out? I can't, oh, I can't live Boolean. Keyshot will not see the live Boolean. Okay, so, oh yeah, that's what I do. I, Boolean, make Boolean mesh. Who would have ever thought that all those math nerds who came up with Booleans, you know, yeah, Boolean a hundred years ago would think that artists would be using Booleans to make snake rings. Okay, so... I suppose it is an unexpected application. Um, and where did it go? It should have it up here somewhere. Is this it? No, this is not it. Van Morde could do an open source audiobook and put it on YouTube as a source of advertisement to your other works. Maybe an older work that's not selling, free MP3s or something. Hmm. Or maybe short stories. Uh, now, let's launch Keyshot. Uh, I just heard a little notice. Someone just subscribed, I think. Where though? I, I, uh, I can't tell. Is this gonna tell me? No. Nope. Is this gonna tell me? Nope. Is this <laughs> gonna tell me? Ah, there you go. Uh, so dashboard. No, that isn't the name of someone. That's that's no. the dashboard. Got it. This is our editor oh here we go evil's revolution has subscribed hopefully they uh, evolved into something less evil uh, okay so here we have our ring in keyshot keyshot is a rendering engine it's not for modeling it's for rendering and ooh uh okay i can rotate this around Looks like it's just in the worst possible rotation. So I'm gonna go back to ZBrush, rotate my ring. Um, uh, nope, I'm gonna skew it around awkwardly. So I think it needs to be facing this way, maybe. Let's see. Well, now you need to put back the dialogue because the dialogue's gone. Oh, yeah. There we are. When you uh, make an actual ring, you'll probably have to do something with that fang so that it doesn't become a, a thing yeah. that snags on actual people. Yes. Ooh, look at it jump. Sorry, I have to kick my little foot heater on every once in a while. It turns itself off. I really wish it wouldn't do that. Okay, um, why is this not updating? Okay, I moved it. Uh, let me try rotating it this way. 90 degrees. Okay, it's, it says Keyshot Render. I hit this. It's supposed to bring up Keyshot and have it be different. Is it different? And what is that? 
I cannot rotate the camera to the same angle I had for whatever reason. It just wants to... <laughs> wow. Okay, not, not a problem I've had before, so I'm not sure how to fix it. Uh, let's see, let's, is there a floor? Here's a floor, okay. So yes, its face is facing the floor. I do not want that. So if I rotate it this way, it should no longer be facing the floor, right? So then I hit this. Is it updated in here? Yes, okay. There we go. Now I can rotate things better. And I can give it uh, whatever kind of metal I want. Um, where are my metals? Here's my metals. So these things will take the shading and lighting differently. Actually, speaking of lighting, let's make the lighting better. Why did my lights go away? Huh. So those are different colors of metals, aren't those different kinds of lighting? Uh, no, they're, they're no, just these little balls here yeah that's just a representation of of whatever the metal is um in but let's see let's find better lighting so if you want to see what it looks like in a conference room you can see it like that if you want to see what it looks like <laughs> out in a parking lot it's got that um, and then there's different kind of studio lighting environments. But for some reason, everything is moved around in weird places. I don't know why. I don't know how. Um, and I don't know how to get back to what I had before. Ben Morta says, Woo, just finished turning my Kindle Fire tablet into a Google version. No more unnecessary things I will never use. Nice. So normally there's a bunch of stuff over on this part of the screen that I go to. All my muscle memory is built to go over there and for whatever reason it's they, just they put the sidebar on not the there. left instead. There's always a sidebar here but it has different things in it. And So you want your tools over here. It's not just my tool. There are tools that exist over there that are not over here. Right. Such as the outliner that shows the object, that shows the background, uh, all the settings for it why why did things randomly change I, d I didn't get a new update to it um, oh we did it behind your back yeah that's that is what I'm not happy about I'm, I'm thinking view there should be like a let's see I don't want presentation mode heads up display is that no. Uh, window. Dock windows. Uh, let's try. Th oh, there we go. Here's the stuff that is normally there. Okay. So now I can go into the environment. I can turn off the background. Um, that's got kind of an interesting look to it. 
that brushed steel, there's like all these different, you know, that, that's obviously not good. That's if you wanted a cheese grater version of it. <laughs> I kind of like that. I'm trying to find something that uh, will, you'll be able to make out the detail well in an illustration. If, if you get these like crazy bright things, it's almost like you can't tell what you're looking at. annealed look to it. That kind of looks like the map that you try to superimpose on the back to produce a bit of... Uh, kind of a grungy look? Yeah. And this one's got all sorts of little scratches in it, which doesn't quite make sense because this thing like formed into its shape. It's not an old artifact. This it's memory metal that can go into whatever shape it wants. Okay. This is the nickels. Yeah, I think the more satins are a little better. That's probably too satin. And that's so bright it washes out details. Yeah. Kind of like this, this brushed look that it's giving. So if I look at this material, I can play with its properties a little bit. So if I turn up the roughness, gives it a little more satin so you could make out the shapes a little better. Uh, let's see, I believe color. Huh, instead of color, it's got these streaks. That's interesting. Oh, okay, so the color, it, there's a color one and a color two. So if I darken those a little bit, shouldn't be quite as ridiculously blown out white. I like that one. Yeah. I think I want to make just a little shinier. 762018 says, hello there. Hello. Howdy, AJ howdy. Mikey says, hi, 76. And 762018 says, hi, AJ. I like it when people get along. Yeah, we don't have many fights on my channel yet. Not enough people for that. Okay. I think that'll do me just fine. Uh... Render. Okay. This snake ring. Not very creative, but gets the idea across really well. And Mona says, time for fisty cups. Bounces on everyone. <laughs> That's, uh, well, if you don't know anything about Guild Wars 2, that would sound incredibly random. Is there fisty cups in Guild Wars? I believe so. It's like, um, I'm getting my, what? Is it those boxy gloves? Boxing glove thingies? I might be confused myself for all I know. Van Mort is good at confusing. Okay, uh, check, done. 
let's go back to Photoshop. One. Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, real quick, let me use my little tune shader. AJ Baki says, I've been doing a lot of toy apocalypse. Ben Morden says, did anyone see the Pixar short film Bow? It's about a dumpling who becomes alive. It's a great story. Yeah, we, we did see that. My favorite, though, is the one with the little um, oh, little bird on the beach. I, I just lost the word turn, I think. T-E-R-N. I don't know if I've seen that one. Oh, you got it. That's it's the best. It's my absolute mm -hmm. favorite. Wow. Okay, so I just realized that I had two different things rendering on there. There we go. That's and seven six two zero one eight says, is that a ring or a bracelet? Well, it could be either, depending on its size, but in this case, it's a ring. AJ Baki says, I love that one with the little bird on the beach. I don't think I've seen, what movie was that before? Was it Wreck-It Ralph 2? Was it recent? Uh, it was a couple of years ago. Okay. Cause the, the, I've seen it on YouTube. The bow one was before Incredibles 2. Um, I have not, maybe it was Inside Out, because I haven't seen Inside Out. Okay. Mortis says, I like the stuff that makes me money. Hmm. There you go, I do too. Sometimes people will say, you know, on their blog, is it okay if I put on ads, would that bother you? Or they'll say, if I have affiliate links, does that bother you? And I always say, whatever makes money that doesn't hurt somebody, go for. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want ads on my books. I just think aesthetically. Okay. It's, and, and it feels more professional to me that way. Okay. And these books are a lot about aesthetics. Yes. <laughs> Very important to me. Was, uh... I'm working on a, uh, a video now about making the, the album covers, and I, I mentioned how when I was a teenager, I started a heavy metal band, mostly so I could make a heavy metal band album cover. <laughs> <laughs> Always a dream of mine. Still, you could put affiliate links on your blog. Oh, sure. So now we've got that snake ring. So what we can do, just to stay on top of things, let's do a search for, oh, there's a lot of rings. Um, you need a space 
ring space. Oh, is that is that what does it? I'm gonna see if I can if it'll just take me to snake ring. Oh no, there's nothing that's a snake ring. Okay, so space space ring ring space and that'll that'll cut down on it being in everything. Oh yep, here it is again. Uh, all right. And there first, try. first finds the ring. Uh, scorched rock littered with dead birds and crabs. The beautiful stone box cracked. Uh, the only gold snake ring transformed into oh inlaid gold snake had transformed into a glittering ring and that's where we want to stick it so we do this uh insert pictures And then my question is, is there is there some thing you have to do to stick the picture there so it doesn't float around while people are reading it on Kindle? Well, I would love to know that as well. Then we we have a particular um, doo -doo -doo -doo. what why did it just make everything oh there we go okay so it's still selected uh, heading three and that centers it makes our little description and nice and clean kind of fixes it yeah that should uh -oh. that should work. So there's technically no space between this and this. So I'm assuming uh, in Kindle, it will just do that. I don't know. In, does that mean in the, print the, that there will Kindle, be In Kindle, there will be no space there. Right. But in print, there would be. But in print, yeah. Oh, hmm. So once everything is in and the copy editing is done, we'll probably want oh, to go in and make Oh, I know. Because you need, you need to make not a heading three. You need to make a heading four. So such that the... Um, what, what heading did you use with this? These are all heading three. Every every image that so I put in is heading three. So how come that one? Because there's enough room for it. See if this if this was smaller by even just a tiny bit, it'll ah, pop and down there it is. There, right. But but what I've read is you never want to do that inside the Word document. You want to make the image the size you want in your image editing program okay. because when Word does it, it mucks with it in some That's way. That's right, it does. Yeah. So you want to import it the correct size. Right. Okay. So, but we won't know what that is until, until all the copy editing is right, done. Right, right, right. Uh, most of the images turned, uh, turned out fine. It's ones, you know, like that are too tall right at the end of a page that tend to have that problem so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anyway uh cool okay so we did a ring um i think i think that's probably a good place to call it for today right. you did a thing yeah i did a thing i made a ring and uh bing -a -ling. The holiday spirit everyone okay so let's um let's call it for today and what is it? Wednesday? Is that the day after Christmas? I think it is. You won't be here. No. You guys are leaving the day after Christmas, but I'll be here. I'm sure I'll be streaming. Uh, I got the whole week off, so... Uh, and the week after that. So I'm going to be getting a lot of Talifar work done. It's going to be exciting. Yes, it is. Hopefully start 3D printing and stuff. Mm. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to get that Scola in that 3D printer. It's going to be great. <laughs> so, all right. We'll see all you guys later. Have okay, a good bye. one. Happy holidays. Bye.